Hi there, this is Alvin, and welcome to the Kickstart Commerce Podcast, where we share search marketing and domain investing strategies to help grow your business. In today's episode, our guest is Jason Shepard, a former DJ now turned full-time domain investor and the newest DN Academy Accelerator instructor. Today, Jason and I discuss how COVID abruptly transitioned him from spinning records as a DJ to flipping domains as a full-time investor. He schools us on how he manages cash flow through liquidation and installment payment plans. Also, Jason shares how he partnered with a local businessman to create a domain partner portfolio in addition to his personal portfolio of 7,500 plus domain names. And finally, Jason compares and contrasts domain investing in 2020 and what's to come in 2021 and what to watch for, including a sneak peek in regards to the dnaccelerator.com. So with that, Jason, welcome and thank you for making time to join us today. Hey, Alvin, thanks for having me. Yeah, certainly. It's uh, interesting. At the time of this recording, it's December the 17th in the longest year of everyone's life. What's interesting is if we, let's see, rewind the clock all the way back to the end of January of this year, you were actually in Austin, Texas. I was. And it, it now, does it feel like it? <laughs> Wait, that feels like about five or 600 days ago. Like, <laughs> I, it, it doesn't even seem like the same decade. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I remember um, I was sitting there thinking about it. I was like, man. I, I believe Mike Seiger was presenting in a breakout room. And if I remember correctly, I think you were leaning on one of the walls on the far, what would have been the right, yeah, the right-hand side of the room looking at Mike Seiger present. But I remember passing you probably a couple of times, I think, because I was sitting like front row. And then I think you were sitting probably, or rather standing and leaning on a wall, probably one to two rows back behind that. Yeah, that, um, that that sounds right because I usually try and make it easy to make a make a quick exit. <laughs> Mike, did you hear that? He said he didn't believe in your presentation and he was exiting. And he's gonna be a DN Academy Accelerator instructor. Mike, you gonna take that? No, that wasn't about. Mike. That was in general. That was a general statement that I do like. You know, sitting on the aisle or clean it up against the wall. <laughs> You know, just, Clean it uh, up. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I definitely, I definitely hear you. Because, hey, the truth be told, sometimes, especially in person at NamesCon prior to COVID, if you attended NamesCon and and, and some of these breakout sessions, it, things could get a bit dodgy at times in terms of people pitching their wares, if you will. Um, and so you kind of want to be near the exit when stuff like that happens. Uh, you know, just because it's kind of like, man, nobody really, you know, wants to get be on the front row, get up, walk out. And and the other thing too is when at the live names con, which is uh, which is just it's kind of unique. Is there's there's usually you know two the two tracks go on at least, and sometimes it's hard to tell which one you think would be you really want to see, and so you you go to one, and you realize okay, well this isn't exactly what I thought it was going to be, or it's going over some material that maybe I heard at a previous names con so let me go see what's what the other room's about because you know you kind of want you can't be in two places at once <laughs> um and you know that's not like they have a, a replay like per se like maybe you would on an online version so yeah well um, and that's that's the difference in terms of what happened this year the latter part of uh 2020 back in september when we had the names con online 2020 and now we're about to roll into names con online 2021 and so now it's a matter of you can be in two places at i guess the same time or rather virtually at at the same time and so not only that you get on demand uh i guess replay of you know some of the presentations so that that's a much welcome change to to the names con in person so one of the things uh that that struck me about you i remember it uh like it was yesterday to a certain extent although yesterday seems like it was like like you said a decade ago due to 2020 
Um, one of the things that, that stuck out, though, is once you left NamesCon, you went on a pretty good tear in terms of uh, you started, I, I believe, running and wa- or, or was it walking? I believe it was running, right? Walking is walk- it's walking. Okay, I, it tried was- run- I tried running and it's a little <laughs> premature. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so share a little bit of kind of what happened. So you went to NamesCon thinking, ah, we'll probably make some good inroads in terms of domain relationships and you come out. And here it is. You're on a health kick, man. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, I mean, anybody that's seen me, you know, whether it's on a on a podcast or a, a names con live or virtual, obviously, you know, I'm a heavy guy and struggled with my weight a lot. But, uh, you know, at names con, I'm not as outgoing as I should be. So sometimes like a, a real names con doesn't really I don't I come away thinking I could have done more. But after NamesCon, though, I, I just made a decision to, you know, just throw myself into domain Twitter and uh, and start making the connections. And, you know, Shane, who I've always looked, you know, Shane Coulter, who I've always looked up to, um, and especially with his, uh, you know, his running and everything. It was just one day he, he I saw where he had run like seven miles or 11 miles or something that morning. I was like, man, I just need to get up and go do a walk. And so I did. And I posted about it as a response to what he did. And man, I mean, the support I got from him and everybody else was just amazing. And I mean, it just, it got me to where I was like doing it every day for for like 30 or 40 days straight. Now, eventually I started having some pro- trouble with a knee. And and so I've, I've had to lay off of it, but I'm going to leave 2020 having lost 50 pounds. Over man. What, what I weighed in January of this year. And so, you know, while I haven't been, able to do as much, you know, walking and everything um, in the last couple of months, I, I still feel good about it. And I'm not put any of the weight back on. And so what I'm going to do is just look at it like, all right, 2021 is a new year. It's got to, got to lather, rinse, repeat, do it again. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's the plan. Well, man, hats off, man. That, that is awesome. 50 pounds, huh? F- yeah. or, or 50 plus. So uh, man, that, that is awesome and exciting because, you know, you think about going to some of these conferences and, and it's really, you, you probably think more so in line or in terms of, Hey, I'm really going to, you know, sharpen my, I guess you'd say domain prowess, uh, in terms of, you know, just the overall acumen of, doing business in, in terms of domains. And here you are, you come out not only with that, but you come out, uh, you know, like I said, a, 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 a step lighter and, and feeling good about yourself and healthy. Not that you didn't before. That's awesome, man. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's always a struggle and I just, you know, it's just something I have to deal with. It's a, uh, it's my own little, uh, own little thing I got to take care of. Hey man, I'll tell you what, everybody has something. Everybody has something. Mine is I can't get past five foot five. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I guess I have to eat my vegetables and vitamins if 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 that will even help at the age of 40 now. So who knows, man? Who knows? Well, hey, I'll tell you what, man, at, at a high level, I mean, let's share with the listeners, those who I know some folks who already know you, but for those who don't, you know, let's share a bit about yourself, just who you are, your personal and professional background. Sure. You know, my, my name is Jason Shepard. I- I grew up in North Carolina. I had a couple of small stints out of state. I lived in Florida for a while, lived in Kentucky for a while. When I started domaining, I was working as a nightclub DJ, and I've been doing that since 2006. Um, I had, you know, some side jobs at, 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 during the course, but for most of that time, it was that was my primary, you know, avocation. It's what I did to to make my money. You know, I've done some side gigs, and you know, full fledged member of the gig economy. But uh, prior to that, I was an IT architect with IBM. I uh, got laid off in 2005, and the timing was just right because I had been doing some fill-in DJing at a couple of clubs around here, having been a lifelong uh, that been a being a passion of mine. I mean, I, I've been DJing since the late 70s, early 80s. When I was a kid, I used to sit there and drop the needle on the record and. Try, and between it, I would talk like I was a DJ on the radio station. Um, I DJed, I DJed all the cool parties in high school, and DJed all through college. A little bit after, but it just didn't really, didn't really click for me. After I gave it up, and then four or five years later, I find myself buying turntables again. It's just kind of something that gets in your blood. So, so I've been lucky to do that since COVID hit. I have not DJed in a nightclub once. 
I did two weddings that I had already previously booked and uh, they really, really shrunk in scale, but they still needed my services. It was for friends. I don't, that's, weddings is not a big part of, was not a big part of my business. Um, and at this point, I'm just trying to figure out what the, uh, what the future holds for me as far as DJing, because, you know, it started out that domaining was a sideline for me. And honestly, at this point, domaining is my primary income and probably was accounted for more of my income in 2019 as well. But I still considered it a sideline then because, you know, I was DJing regularly, but through the first three months of this year, two and a half months, that's what I was doing. But since then, yeah, I haven't. And I, who knows what the future holds? I don't know when, I don't know when clubs are going to be opening back up. So I'm having to, having to make some, make some tough decisions at this point. Man, talk about, Hey, Mr. DJ, man, you go from in person to, I mean, so, so have you done anything like virtual stuff or? Um, I did. Uh, it was, it was a man, it was a land rush to Twitch for the DJ community. And it was like, everybody <laughs> was just, oh, if they, if they, if they couldn't DJ in the clubs, they had to have a live stream. And I, I gave it a try. It didn't feel the same, yeah. but um, over the summer and with the domain socials and some of the, uh, some of the other stuff with the community, um, the domain community getting together virtually, I decided to give it another try. And we had a little, uh, little Halloween party that, uh, that was a lot of fun. And I'm actually planning something for New Year's Eve because at this point, it looks like it's going to be the first New Year's Eve I have not DJed in probably 15 years. There may have been one in around uh, like 2012 where I didn't. Um, but uh, for the most part, I mean, as a as a nightclub DJ, New Year's Eve is the night that you're going to be working, and so it's going to feel weird this year. And so, <laughs> I, you know what? A lot of people will be home. Maybe I just hop online and do a little uh, little New Year's Eve party. So we'll see what happens. I might give you a runway, runway right on into to uh, what what's your uh, Twitter handle? D D V D J Kingpin, right? I think that's right. And, okay. and if if nobody steals it from me, I have plans to change it. I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to <laughs> want any listeners to hold my uh, my desire to be hostage. But uh, you know, DVDJ is a monic is a preface. You know, obviously there's DJ in there, and the DV is the digital video because when I DJ, I spend videos. And even when you, if I'm playing a party that doesn't have screens. I'm still playing videos because all of my music is basically um, the music that I prefer to play, you know, the versions that I'm used to playing are videos. Yeah, they take up a lot of hard drive space. But it, <laughs> when you're at a club that has a big screen TV or has multiple TVs around the place, it really kind of kind of kicks it off. And, I, you know, I just it's just something that I like to do. I've, I've loved music videos since MTV came out to be able to, you know, combine DJing and, and video DJing has just been been amazing for me. Interesting. So had no plans as a 2020 of ending his DJing and yet life through your curveball. And so, I mean, share, share a bit just about like, how did domains come into play and kind of what was that aha moment for you where you were like, uh, actually, I might be able to do this. I'll tell you when the aha moment should have come. And that was in <laughs> 2003 when I, when I sold a, a very small portfolio of names that I had bought to develop, not even knowing there was an aftermarket. And mm. somebody contacted me about them. In retrospect, it was probably a domain investor, but they said they, mm. you know, they, said they, they, they gave me a story that fit with the domains that I had. They were horse related um, because at the time I was, I was into horses and raising horses. Um, and I actually made a little money. Um, I, I want to say that the the registration fees back then were a bit higher. So I, I didn't make bank, but I sold a handful of names for, you know, a few grand. And by the time I, you know, had the, the small portfolio registered for a few years, that added up kind of quick. But still, you know, I wish, 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 wish mm. that it had clicked for me then, but it didn't. So fast forward to uh, 2016. And, you know, I mentioned earlier, I was a member of the gig economy. I was doing some online marketing work for a real estate agent friend of mine and was picking up names for him and then just stumbled across the fact that there existed a GoDaddy auction, domain name auctions and, and an aftermarket. Hmm. And I was like intrigued and uh, 
pretty much that was all she wrote because within a few days I was already, you know, finding names I liked, putting them in spreadsheets, watching Domain Sherpa, <laughs> um, diving in head head first, you know, and I had I had a couple of sales in 2016, but not many, a, a handful more in 2017, a couple um, in, well, all right. So I'm trying to think back. It may have been, I may be off a year. I think my first sales were in 2017. Had a few more in 2018 and then 2019 really took off. Um, so I don't I don't know that it was 2016 when I was actually when I discovered GoDaddy auctions, but it was I think it was 2017. But still, um, and, and I threw myself into it like I do a lot of things. And by 2019, it was uh, it was all she wrote. And, and NamesCon 2019 was the first one that I went to as well. Interesting. And so, like, how did you? Turn the corner because there's always a story of domain investors who begin to dabble uh, here and there in domain names, and you know they're buy mo- most get on the frenzy of buying and not really selling, not really looking for outbound, not doing any of that stuff. It's just buy, 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 buy. So how did you turn the corner? Uh, was it one of those that you just said, okay, hey? I'm going to only purchase X amount of names. Let's say 10 names, try to sell those. If they sell, then I'll buy more. Or, you know, or was it something totally different that allowed you to have your aha moment, but at the same time, start to turn the corner in terms of refining your strategy for using data uh, and the like? It was probably a little bit of luck. I, I was, you know, I was buying and selling some names um, in that 2018 period. and. One of the one of the people that I work for owns the clubs in you know, the, the couple of the clubs I've played at over the years, um, and I do some uh, do some online marketing for them. You know, I, I was just sharing some of the things I was doing with domain names, and he was like, "Hey, I'd like to you know maybe have a little uh, you know kind of get into that a little bit." And so we kind of came up with an arrangement. You know, started up a, a partnership portfolio, had some better names in it than maybe the the names I was buying because. Um, you know, he was a businessman who, who had a vision for this. And actually, some of our better names were purchased at the 2019 um, NamesCon Live auction. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah. I was sitting down there. That's, that's where I met, uh, met Drew Wash. He was sitting beside me. We're now, uh, we're now NamesCon auction buddies because we, we, <laughs> we sat beside each other at 2020 as well. Um, Did and, you encourage uh, him to uh, bid on Earthlings? I had nothing to do with that, but I was sitting beside him, oddly enough, when he bought DJs.com. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, dude, I'm a DJ. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know, so we've, we've had a really, a really cool connection since then. And I, I speak to him, uh, uh, you know, occasionally and, and frequently on, on social media. Yeah, so, you know, we bought, I bought like seven or eight names at uh, 2019 NamesCon. Wow. There's some really good ones. Smart Drugs, Solvent, which we've sold, Cannabis Company. So we bought a handful of names there that really started the, uh, you know, the, the foundation of, a, of what I consider to be a really nice portfolio. Nice. Now, my, you know, there, there's about 1,700 names in the uh, partnership portfolio now, and there are some really, uh, really high-end ones in there. And then there's some other ones. I tend to like a, a bifurcated pr- approach to, um, to domaining because I think personally, I need the, I need the lower end turnover, mm-hmm. constant action of some sales to keep me interested. But at the same time, I like, I like having some nicer names as well. Now, when you originally sold the smaller portfolio, like, do you remember what size? Was it a couple hundred names or just a handful of names? Well, I, didn't, I didn't sell a portfolio. I, we started a, a separate portfolio. Okay. It's completely separate from my personal portfolio. So gotcha. I, I've got, I've got a lot of names. I've got over 5,000 names personally, um, but, the, but the, uh, the, the partnership portfolio is about 1700 names now. And, you know, we've sold names from it, but it's still, it's, you know, it still maintains itself. Right. And I'm still uh, purchasing on that one has slowed down a bit since COVID hit because my partner is, uh, you know, he's a businessman in industries that have been, acutely impacted by you know the pandemic so mm-hmm. the the uh the purchasing has slowed down a bit on that front since uh in 2020 you know the portfolio is still doing well still still selling names out of it for sure that's awesome so man how in the world do you keep up basically with over what almost seven thousand names probably like approximately 
over 6,700, uh, if I can do math. <laughs> well, and I was probably underestimating a little. So I, I guarantee you that I've got 7,500 names that I'm in control. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you make sense of, of and, and obviously it's all relative because we have some domainers that are out there with 30, 40, 50,000 names, some out there that are flying under the radar with 100,000 or more, uh, but most tend to probably, I would say most are probably that 2,500 or less. How do you keep up with it all? It, it, it's time consuming to be sure. I do spend a lot of my, a lot of my week going through names. And, and the thing is with, with this many names, there are going to be mistakes that happen because of it. Mm. You know, I sold, I've sold names that for under a hundred dollars that I would never have intended to sell for that. But as you're going through spreadsheets full of names and looking at, at various metrics on them and deciding, you know, which ones am I going to put up for liquidation or which ones am I going to hold and, and, and only sell for full price, at a to a good good end user. Um, so th- this year, I've liquidated 354 names. This year, man, that's um, almost a name a day. Yeah, I, that maybe that's that should be my goal. I should <laughs> I should I should kick it in for the last part of this month and get that up to a uh, um, to one a day. Um, and, <laughs> and so for liquidations, I consider that to be anything under 400. So okay. Um, because and then for retail sales, I've had fifty-eight retail sales, and that's four hundred and up. Um, and the the average liquidation is uh, this year has been forty-five dollars. So it's not like I'm selling them all trying to get my reg fee back. Right. You know, I'll look at I'll put a I'll put a pack of names up either on Drop Catch because I have a lot of names at Namebright, and they changed in August, and you can only list on their platform for names that are at Namebright. Mm. But I still have a lot there. And so I've, I've done well on that platform um, selling names. And so I'll list, you know, 100 names at their max or, you know, at their max starting price of $59, knowing that I will, you know, sell a handful. But I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, I wouldn't be the end of the world, but I, I know that not all of them are going to sell. Um, and if all of them were going to sell, I might be a little more careful about what I put up. But just knowing that that a certain number have a good chance to sell that kind of keeps the money flowing, pays for the renewals um, and thins the portfolio a little bit and allows me to buy new names and buy more names. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it, you know, it's been a, it's been a constant um, churn. And then the, the other thing too, is I've dropped a lot of names this year. I've dropped uh, 400 names this year. You know, that's 700 names that are basically turned over either through through dropping or through you know liquidation. Um, so you know with a big portfolio that, that kind of thing happens. And I sold a name and I think I've mentioned it on other um in other other avenues that uh was very timely and I undersold it and basically I did a retail sale at what was probably wholesale for the situation and that was spray sanitizer. I bought it in January of 2019 and didn't click that it was in my portfolio when COVID hit <laughs> and somebody pulled the trigger on a fast transfer, buy it now for $500. <laughs> and I was like, Ew, I wish I'd have seen that because I think I probably could have gotten a few more, uh, you know, a little more out of that um, given, you know, the whole situation with the sanitization after, after the pandemic hit. Yeah, I had I had a couple names like that. Uh, they were uh, geo health names that, I'd registered years ago, you know, stuck a price on them at that point, and then COVID happened, forgot about them, and the next thing I know, kind of like you said, you're you're happy because all of a sudden you see, oh, after Nick, uh, what is it, after Nick, um, transaction That's assurance, sold, yeah, yeah. yeah. Has, so, so this domain has been sold. You you get happy, and then you look at the the, the actual name and what it sold for, and then you take the climate in the current context, rather, uh, in which it was sold, you kind of like, Oh yeah, about that, which then obviously made me rush out to all the health names. And I was like, all right, we, I can't, I can't let go, you know, too many more of these under those circumstances. Um, so then with that many domains, how many platforms do you use? Or is it that you just strictly try to stick to one platform just for ease of manageability? The standard recipe up until now, well, up until COVID, it was always list on Afternic, put it on Dan. 
Dan Landers after Nick. Um, so you get the registration path sales. Um, and, and I still do that. What I've, what I've done in 2020, though, is um, expanded my brandable marketplace um, submissions greatly. Mm. I've submitted over 1,100 names to Brand Bucket this year alone. Wow. Um, and I've got like a 30% acceptance rate, and, and, and I've purchased a few wholesale. So I, the, the Brand Bucket portfolio is over 400 now. And I'm adding to that a lot. I haven't submitted all of the names that I already own that I intend to. It's just kind of a, you know, it's a slow process. But as as sales have come in through that, and I've sold, we've sold names in the partnership portfolio there as well. Um, and I have plans to submit more of those names also. What, what I'm seeing is that I kind of want to have a lot of names there because what I'm not convinced at is that the, whether it's GoDaddy or one of the partners, I'm not convinced that their registration path interface is presenting good alternatives in the brandable space when the name that somebody thinks up and tries to register is taken. Mm. And so I think that if you have the exact match in another extension, it's probably going to present that. It may present it a certain way depending on uh, – the what they're you know what they're getting compensated for from registries and a number of different things come into play but i'm not sure that if if you you're a couple degrees of separation but you'd probably still be good for whatever business that person is trying to buy a name for i don't think it's getting presented whereas at your squad helps and your brand buckets i think that uh, they go in and they're going to you know they go in there trying to look for a name and i think that those marketplaces do a better job of presenting options to people when what they're looking for specifically isn't available. So the plan is just to get as many names as I can get accepted at those platforms listed there and then uh, evaluate what's left. And probably, you know, except for the better name, and, and I don't know why a better name wouldn't get accepted there, unless it's just too, too much of an exact match type mm. name. You know, so other than that, the rest of the names, if they weren't accepted at one or the other, they're probably headed for liquidation and uh, will be, you know, taken out of the portfolio. There's not necessarily, uh, I guess, a sentimental value then or a tie to all of these names. Yeah, I mean, there's probably a small percentage, but in most cases, I mean, you have 75, almost 7,500 names. I mean, you you pretty much almost have to turn a blind eye to a certain extent of just saying, look, if I purchased it for X and it hadn't sold in a year or two years, I got to let it go. Yeah, to an, to an extent, as you go, and this, this happens to everybody, you get better at selecting names for resale. So I want to be fleshing out the stuff that I n- now know better than to buy from last year or from two <laughs> years ago. If I, didn't, if, I didn't, if I didn't ditch it last year, just because I've got two renewals in it doesn't make it any better. Um, and so I, I want to learn from my, from, I want to learn the craft as I go. And things that things that I thought made sense to purchase a year ago, if they don't, if I wouldn't repurchase it again today, today, then I'm not going to, I'm not going to necessarily renew it. And so that's been the, a lot of the names that have gone through the, uh, through the liquidation process. And, and the great thing is that we've got op- options available to us now that weren't available even as little as a year ago or 18 months ago. I mean, I've had I've had great success with Name Liquidate. I mentioned the Drop Catch Marketplace earlier, which, as as mentioned, was is limited to names that are at Namebright. But what about because, DNW? Uh, what is it? DNWE? Yeah, I've had a couple sales there. Um, the uh, and I have a daily reminder to submit five names. <laughs> I don't do it every day, uh, but you know, I do I do try and submit names there on on a regular basis, and I need to be better about it. But it's just one of those things where I have not gotten dialed in what names fit that marketplace and, and will be accepted there. And so, you know, getting getting the occasional rejection and, and Josh and Josh, love you both. Uh, I love the platform, <laughs> <laughs> but I just haven't gotten dialed in what they're going to accept on a regular basis. And so um, it's just, if, you, if you're having a lower success rate than, than you do at some other things, you, you naturally, you have an aversion to that. So I, I love the platform. I do, I have had sales there for sure, but uh, it's not been as successful for me as, as some of these others. Gotcha. Now, in terms of of platforms and where you've been successful, like what would you say percentage wise, and they don't necessarily have to be exact, but 
you know, roundabout percentages, or if you can't give exacts, that'd be great. But through, if we were to look at the platforms, what would you say, you know, 60% of your sales come through after Nick, another 20% come through Dan, kind of what's that breakdown look like across different platforms? Well, and it's it's odd because the uh, the two portfolios are significantly different in how the breakdown is. Right. Most of the sales in the in the partnership portfolio, quantity wise, come through Afternick. Hmm. Now, sales size wise, the largest sales have been through Dan. For my portfolio, the bigger portfolio, it is very close to fifty fifty. One of the differences there is that I offer the. Um, the, the lease to own plan, the sales acceleration, I believe is what it's called on Dan. Right. And I have a lot of names that are, that are financed. I mean, and, and which I love, um, you know, I get a certain amount of relatively steady income every month off of the 12 or 15 names that I have, you know, on, on payment plans. And typically as one or two will roll off, a couple more will come in. And so it's, it's not, there, there's a, there's just some stability there because, yes, of course, some of them default occasionally. I, mean, I don't have a definite percentage, but I would say probably in the 5 to 10% range of defaulted of the ones that I've done. But at the same time, that kind of keeps things on an even keel, having that, right. uh, having, having that, that monthly income coming in from those, those finance domains. But then we did not, we did the traditional payments on the partnership portfolio. And that gives you the make offer option. But for whatever reason, the names in that portfolio just have not. In fact, we've seen a, a, a market decrease this year on those names, on the sale of those names through Dan. Whereas, and I was just running the numbers earlier today, all of 2019, there were 24 um, after Nick sales in that portfolio. So far in 2020, there have been 24 after Nick sales in that portfolio. The dollar amount was within $500. That portfolio has been two is two years running has been almost identically. Um, the Southie rate has been almost identical on uh, on it at at the after Nick platform. Whereas we have seen a little bit of a decrease on volume at uh, at Dan. The dollar amount is probably the same at Dan because we had a, very, a pretty big sale at the beginning of the year through Dan on that one. You're seeing more and more in terms of installment plans. And that's something that I did bring up at NamesCon, the in-person NamesCon. So January 2020, um, I actually presented on it. Mm-hmm. I made a statement in the presentation to where I predicted that Dan would probably close in close to 20% of their revenue would be installment payments going forward. Now that was prior to me even knowing about COVID shutdown, everything that's happened this year. And I just saw a tweet the other day of where Dan was like, it's somewhere just north of 16% um, in terms of their installment payment plans. And so that being said, like how long or what's the average length of most of those payment plans? Are we talking 12 months, 36 months? I, the the bulk of them are twelve months. Sometimes the um, somebody will buy a lower price name, mm-hmm. you know, um, for a shorter period, just because they don't want to come off the cash right up front. Right. Um, but it's interesting that you that they put out that it was sixteen percent because I would say without having the without having done the breakdown that well over half of my Dan sales in twenty twenty have been financed, have been installment plans. Wow. Probably more than that, but I would, I I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to be wrong there, but I would say it's at least half. Uh, It seems like almost every sale that I get through Dan is done as a, in installments. So does that change knowing that, you know, it makes me think about the, how does that impact your pricing per se, or just even the methodology in to which you price kind of give us, you know, the insight there in terms of saying, well, does it cause you to, you know, kind of increase your price a little bit more because now we're, we're not necessarily, while we are concerned with the total amount, we're also, you got to be concerned with if somebody's willing to pay over 12 months, you know, the difference in that could be a $90 
payment plan versus a $250 payment plan? In general, in 2020, I raised prices. It wasn't specifically as a, you know, as a response to the fact that more were getting financed. But it was just, and a lot of new, a lot of domainers do this. When you get in, you, you're like, hey, you know, I, I spent fifty dollars on this man, and I sold it for seven hundred fifty. That's an amazing return. Right. And as you start to have experience with the business model, the time you spend maintaining the portfolio, the you know the renewals that uh, are always coming and never stop, like the bad guy in a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you realize that, okay, selling something, buying something for 50 and selling it for 750 sounds great, but, you know, you, you need to be getting a little more for that. So in general, I raised the prices this year. And a lot of times it, it comes down to the the fact that with this many names, you can't evaluate every one of them exactly. And I just had a, a few too many times, like the, like the spray sanitizer I mentioned earlier, where a name would hit and I'd be like, wow, man, we undersold that. You know, yeah, it was 688 and it was a discount drop, which is a tremendous return. But that name, that name should have, you know, brought 1500 and, and, and I should never have had it priced, at, you know, around 700 like I did. So in general, I just raised the prices across the board. If that, you know, affected the slowdown in sales or the, the move to more installments, it's almost impossible to to say. I mean, the only way to test it would be for me to turn off installments and see how the impact was. And I really don't want to do that. <laughs> right. Right. Well, you know, uh, hey, if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. <laughs> right. Now, I have said if 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 I get up to the point where, you know, I, and I think I said it was fifteen earlier, but I, I'm 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 thinking more like twenty or twenty five. If I have twenty five names on installments. And I don't have a bunch of them that are going to be, you know, com- wrapping up in the next 90 days. I could see myself saying, all right, let's, uh, let, let's turn them off temporarily. Let's, you mm-hmm. know, let's just make that because it's an account setting at Dan. Right. Um, and I, I would be like, all right, well, let's just turn it off and, and let these roll a little bit, maybe make a few, uh, a few outright sales. And it, it, I, I could see myself doing that. I haven't gotten to that point yet. Although I did take a, uh, Certain certain TLD I took off of I just manually clicked through all of them and took that took them off of the uh, off the installment plans partially because I wanted to make offer option to show and that was my .dot VC names because the renewals on them are a little higher a lot of them were acquired at a special introductory price and I would like to sell a few outright to uh, to pay for the renewals on any that I decide to keep beyond you know the initial renew the initial registration which was obtained at a special uh, you know promotional price and I did sell another one just this past week um, another dot VC yes man this guy this guy I'm done <laughs> I'm done and so for those of you that don't know this so chef I, I don't I just it's still mind boggling to me that you put a name out on Twitter or, or rather, I think you said, Hey, I sold this name for almost five grand. It was a dot VC name. And then within like 24 hours, lightning struck again. It did. And, and, and that was, that was just a complete and utter shock to me. And (laughs) and to this day, I don't know. And it was different buyers because it was Dan sales. And, you know, you see a little bit of uh, information up in the corner of the Dan interface, you see their IP address in the country of origin and, and it was clearly not the same person. Um, and so it was just, you know, it was just, just lightning striking twice. It was just, it was, it was amazing. It didn't happen. I didn't get two this last time. You know, I, it was, I, it was it, I was on pins and needles for that 24 hours following this recent sale. Cause I was like, come on, I got to get another one. It's, uh, you know, there's precedent <laughs> here. Um, and, and it didn't happen, but uh, the one, and it was another $5,000 sale. Um, it was uh, people.vc, and I didn't put this on Twitter because I seem to cause a little bit of a little bit of a, <laughs> a rush on the on the TLD last time, and I, and I really I really didn't fully consider the impact of my of my uh, actions, and I hope that anybody <laughs> that hears about this third sale will not rush out and register really bad .vc names because. You're like, oh man, Jason sold three in 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 four months. 
And uh, yeah, don't don't do that. The ones I sold were would easily be solid six figure names in dot com. And so if you go register a two word dot VC where the dot com is is not even a five figure name, that's going to be a losing proposition for you. I'm just telling you that. Save your money. But yeah, so it was people I'm registering v- right now. Hey, <laughs> Mister DJ dot V C. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Dot VC. So, I mean, so then help me understand this because one of the things that I've noticed just in our short time of knowing one another, just me watching you at a distance in terms of some of the sales um, that you've realized, like, man, it's become evident to me, like you have an eye for words and, and knowing the the match of words in the TLD. And so like, What goes through your mind as you go? Because to a certain extent, I look at .vc and I'm like, okay, that's cool. I'm probably not going to go touch that. But for you, you just kind of said, okay, well, hey, obviously you're using a bit of the promo, but then kind of walk through the mindset for, you know, how do you, uh, I guess, avoid the landmines there in terms of when you're investing in CCTLDs? Well, and it's a tough one because I've had very tepid success on several other CCTLD. Mm. I still don't, I still don't, ha- I only have one dot co sale and I, you know, I probably have 30 or 40. I, I don't have my head wrapped around what works in dot co. I, I just don't. And dot IO, I've had a few sales, but I'm, I'm just not patient enough for those. And, and, and nowadays on both dot co and dot IO, the, the, wholesale market, the auctions are just going crazy on these. Oh yeah. And I'm not going to spend money on something that I don't feel I have a handle on. And, and oddly, you know, you mentioned the promo and I did two on the dot VCs, you know, the, the first two sales preceded the promo. And this recent sale was a name that I purchased prior to the promo as well. Honestly, from, from a strictly business standpoint, I would have been better off ignoring the promo and just using, just holding on to the names that I sold. But I, I like the TLD. And, and at that price, I was, uh, I was, I was willing to take a chance because I had seen some, some success. I was hoping that it, that it would, uh, there would be a recurrence of it. And, and luckily, you know, there was on this one, but like I said, none of the names that I bought at the promotional pricing have sold yet. Then how we got down this path was I took those names off of the installment plan so that people could make offers Mm. because, you know, I do want to sell these. And the one that sold this past week was the minimum offer was the 5,000 that I sold it for. And when the offer came in, it was that age old question of, do you counter and give them a chance to be off the hook? Or do you trust that they're not going to run away and, and crawfish on the deal? If you, if you snap call their, uh, their offer. Right. Because then they're going to think, oh, I probably could have got this for less. Well, technically, you couldn't have because you, that was the minimum offer on the platform you were on. And so in this case, I thought I had lost the deal. It went on a few days. The first couple of days, the, the guys at Dan said they'd been in touch with the, uh, with the buyer. He was just getting the money together. And so everything seemed fine. And then a few days went by and they were like, yeah, we haven't been able to get a hold of him the last couple of days. And finally, I was like, you know, <laughs> looking like he's flaked. Let's just put it back on the market. Within 24 hours of them putting it back on the market, I got a message from the from the guys at Dan, who all of those guys are great. They, I work, work with them all the time, and I really appreciate everything they do. And they said, hey, the buyer has come back. Do you still want to sell it for that price? I was like, absolutely. Within, you know, it didn't take long. It was over a weekend that they actually had gotten the payment and everything wrapped up uh, this past Monday and Tuesday. And, uh, and I got paid out on it. So I thought I had actually lost it at that for, for a, a period in the middle there. And then when he came back, I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. Percentage wise now, how, how, what does your portfolio look like when you start talking about TLDs and just what the, the breakdown is? I am a firm believer in dot com. Um, the fact that some of my notable successes that people may have, may, I may be known for, uh, are in the .vc extension is not to be taken as, as anything that I'm a, I'm a new TLD or a CCTLD guy. Um, if it weren't for the promo and me probably going overboard on buying some .vcs, I would say I'd probably be about 92%.com. 
Wow. Um, I'm probably in the high 80%.com right now with the with the extra dot VCs that I'm carrying. But the, the overall plan is to try and not be uh, have anything, not not get less than 90% long term in dot com. And and I really wouldn't mind seeing that, you know, a little higher. 93%.com would be fine with me. Some people can have successes with the new GLT, GTLDs. I mean, I, and every once in a while, I see one that I like, but I, I don't think that they make sense for um, for investors. Right. And, and somebody, I was on a uh, I was on a panel last night that uh, somebody pointed out that they are great for end users. They're not great for investors. Totally. Because the person, the person that needs one that where the the word that the TLD and the SLD span to make the phrase mm-hmm. that describes their business. That is that is great, and I uh, but I just don't think from an investor perspective, us holding a bunch of these, oftentimes with higher re- um, you know renewal costs, makes sense from a from a fiduciary perspective that it's going to be long term profitable. And so when when somebody brands or, or operates a business on one, I'm like more power to you. Um, and if there are investors that are figuring out ways to to get those into those people's hands in a profitable way, you know, good on you. Keep it up. But I just personally, I don't I don't see that. And I think that the uh, the dot com is and will be king for as long as uh, as long as I'm you know for many years to come. I won't say as long as I'm in the main investing. Because I don't think I'm going anywhere, and think you never know what's going to be what things are going to look like five or ten years down the road. Oh man! But I think for the foreseeable future, and I don't think there'll ever be a point where you're like um, people are are, are where it, where dot com is a second class TLD. I I don't right. think I will ever see that. Right, and I I recently had an interview with a gentleman, Kalen Karakovov. I mean, and I probably just butchered all of his name up, but brother, you know, I'm talking about Kalen K is <laughs> yeah, what I'm going to yeah. call him. So what, what's interesting there, he was relaying to me uh, in terms of saying, once you get outside the United States, most are going to, you know, use CCTLDs um, in, in most cases. Now, there are cases to where by a local business does not use a local, a uh, CCTLD and they'll opt for uh, a dot com in most cases because they're trying to reach a global footprint. But in most cases, those businesses are local. They will choose to deal with their local CCTLD. So, you know, so that being said, to a certain extent, I mean, we're 30 years into this, which is still, I mean, for an industry that is still very young. And so, you know, when we start looking at things like dot online, dot web, dot app, and so on and so on and so on, like it's going to take folks developing these names, not necessarily going out and holding them as investments. Although there are some names that you probably would hold as investments, but for the most part, I, I believe you're right that for the foreseeable future, it will be dot com, and there there will be some sprinkled sales in between there that will go for you know some head turning value that everybody will look at and go, wow, man, congrats! I couldn't do it, but you know, congrats that you did it. So uh, that that is interesting. So then, in terms of of coming back to to dot VC, like what makes you you know believe that hey, this is this is I've likely got a, a bit of runway with this CCTLD and the domains that you've purchased to be able to uh, figure out a profitable strategy for flipping. I mean, I get a newsletter that's branded on a dot VC. I think yeah, Morgan had mentioned it. I think he mentioned it on one of your podcasts. Yeah. It, and and that was, if I recall, filmed at Namescon. Yep. Uh, 2020, I think. And I just remember coming out of NamesCon, hearing that that, that dot VC was speeding up, that and dot GG, and dot GG has been completely dead for me. And I know there have been some guys that have they've had luck with it, but um, you know, I, I bought a handful, and I think I sold one on DNWE. Mm. I've not had a retail sale of a dot GG, and and so that's just one of those where I don't have my head wrapped around what it's going to take. And I, I, and I don't know that I did anything different other than just looking at that and saying, what would make sense to, in the gaming world? Um, I think the one I sold at uh, DWE, and I'm not going to say the price, but it's it was uh, beastmode.gg. I, that seems like a, a, game, a gamer style word. You right. Know? Seems like a 
seemed like it would fit in that in that space. And so I have I have ones like that and some uh, you know so that's that was my type of thinking. Now I would never ever buy beastmode.vc <laughs> because <laughs> you know dot vc is going to is what I'm thinking there is and what I'm hearing is that that is the venture capital world. Right. And I've looked and I've you know I've looked at some of the sites and yes there are some of them branding on that. And then sometimes they're branding on the dot com and they're staking out the dot vc just because they want to have it as well because if there is a more of a shift in that you know in that industry to to putting their websites on the dot vc they want to make sure they have that one tied up as well. So but it just it's the same process. It's like, okay, what is the potential end user for this venture capital? What kinds of words would go well with that? What would, you know, if I were in the venture capital space, what is a word is, if I'm looking at one, is this a word that I could see my, my company branding on? Or is it a word that would be in my name that I would want to be my short, easily, you know, remembered website to be on? So, and, and that, that's really it. Wash, rinse, repeat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, man, that's that is uh, interesting. So, kind of changing up gears a little bit in terms of you know looking at your 2020, you you expected to be spinning turntables, and now you're spinning names. And so, what has 2020 been like for you? And then, kind of, what do you see 2021 looking like? 2020, 2020 has just been it's been crazy. Now, the, what's funny is that. My day-to-day life it was not tremendously impacted other than the fact that I didn't go out on Friday night and DJ for 900 screaming college kids. <laughs> and, and, uh, we don't miss that at all. <laughs> um, well, and for me, it was, it, it, you know, it was, it was almost, I mean, yeah, actually it was, it was a lifelong dream. I mean, I had a very large venue full of people that were, having a good time because I was playing the songs they want to hear. And that right. was just, that was, and so that's COVID took that away. And so, so I don't have that now, but it's other than that, I mean, staying at home was kind of what I did anyway. Uh, I'm a, I'm a bit of a homebody, a little bit of an introvert. I, you know, I, I've opened up a lot this year, especially on zoom and some in the domain socials and whatnot. But um you know, I'm not that uh, I'm not that real gregarious, go out kind of guy. I'm also getting up in years a little bit. I, mean, <laughs> I used to like to go out a lot more when I was younger, um, and so 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 day to day, it's not been a huge impact. But you know, the, the the things that we talked about already, kind of you know, making more connections in the domain world, um, that kind of thing has just made it clear that this is the direction things are going, and that that full time domaining is probably you know, what's in the cards for me going forward. Um, you know, I do still, so things that used to be primary gigs, you know, will they be side gigs going forward or will they, be, will they just fall off? It's hard to say. We were thinking about opening up on Friday nights within the parameters of the, cur- of the alcohol curfews in the, sp- in the area. And then this third wave hit and they, they you know, the enforcement was going to be higher, the restrictions, you know, Shortly after we made the decision not to, even harder restrictions came in that would have completely eradicated anything we were trying to do. Wow. Meaning that we made the right decision not to not to try and open up. So, and I was going to do that. I was going to do it through the end of the year, and then and then reevaluate. And now I don't even think you know, like I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to be playing New Year's Eve out anywhere that I'm that I'm aware of. I can't imagine, given the current situation. Here in North Carolina, you know, and in a lot of states, that that there will be much going on out and about on New Year's Eve. So well, if it if it is, I won't be there. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that much I do know. <laughs> right now, I get you. Um, so so twenty twenty one is already got some got some really uh really cool things happening. Um, earlier this year, now I, I have been a DNA Academy member going back at least two years. I, I took advantage of a really nice lifetime membership special that Mike ran a while back. Right. And the likes of which I would you probably will never see again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm thankful for it. But I, you know, and I worked my way through parts of it. But then he offered up the accelerator earlier this year. 
Right. And I jumped the chance, and I know Mike, and I'd sat beside him at, at, a, at a meal at NamesCon, and we talked uh, a bit. And I said, Mike, I'm a terrible student, but I'm going to give this a try. Um, and <laughs> I did, and it was, and it went great. I had a blast. We've uh, we've actually continued a, a post accelerator group that meets at the same time as the accelerator had met, um, and and it's just really been a just a, a, a rewarding experience and a great learning experience. And Mike is doing another accelerator in in it's going to start February first. Signups begin January first, and I'm actually going to be co-instructing that. So Mike and I are going to be uh, be co-instructors together on that, and I, I couldn't be more thrilled. We're more honored that, that, he, uh, that he, he, he saw fit to bring me on to help him out with that. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So, I mean, I know that, I don't know what 2021 has in store for the full time of the year, but I know that, you know, the beginning of the year is going to be great for me because we're going to have signups. We're going to go into NamesCon and then right out coming out of NamesCon, we're going to kick off the accelerator. And, uh, and that'll be, you know, that'll be a number of weeks. We're still deciding exactly how long it's going to run. It'll be at least eight. And uh, and so I'm looking forward to that. Man, that is awesome, and and congrats, congrats. I mean, you've you've you put it in the time, and and, and to a certain extent, you know, it, it, what's interesting to me is I think that that's a testament to what I call showing up. Fifty percent of the battle is what just showing up. Now the other, yeah, you gotta you gotta get the skills. You you've got to hone the fundamentals and everything. Got to refine those. But most of it is just showing up, like you showing up to NamesCon literally open doors for you now granted like you said you had already been a member but because you had been a member but you showed up in person you got to sit at a dinner with mike got to know him uh at a personal and professional level but it just kind of opened the door that you were able to attend the accelerator did well there and now you know the student has become the teacher uh, <laughs> and so it's like full cir- a full circle moment so congrats man Thank you. I really do appreciate it. And I, and I, and I thank Mike for the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, so help us understand, like, who is the accelerator for and what is it? Well, I, the accelerator is a, is an intense run through the DN Academy material. Mm-hmm. And, and, it, and it, it's, it's perfect for people like me who join and dabbled at it, did some of it, you know, picked and, cho- and chose which chapters they wanted to really dive into, but didn't get the full measure of what it had to offer because life gets in the way. You, you know, it's easy, you know, it's easy to get interrupted. Um, you know, your phone dings when you're, when you're going through a chapter and the next thing you know, it's three hours later, you got to fix dinner. Squirrel. This? Exactly. <laughs> um, and so what this does is it gives you a set time every week. You're held accountable. You have homework, um, you and you work through the entirety of DN Academy in a finite space of time with the help of, in our case, we had the founder and and head instructor Mike leading us through it. And in this case, you'll have Mike and myself doing that. Um, and I've been through, you know, obviously I've been through the accelerator and, and therefore the whole course. Um, and so it it just it really just it gets you through it in a compact way. That will that will maximize the uh, the material and and really get you started in the uh, in the domaining world. And a lot of people are have been domaining for a while and may even be profitable domainers, but there's still so much to learn from it um, that that I highly recommend it. Now, how many seats uh, are going to be offered? I think we're going to put it right around fifty. So, and, and, and obviously, there are things that may be subject to change. Right. It's not until uh, it's not until February. And Mike and I have, uh, you know, just recently, you know, kind of come to get. He's he's announced, and we've announced. Obviously, we've been talking a little while that I'm going to be co-instructing it. So, there, you know, there may be some things that, that get tweaked on it, but I think we're shooting for right at fifty. Yeah, and and it's from what I hear from the first uh, folks that got accepted into the accelerator, there were a few people, and they will go unnamed, that got kicked out because they did not take it serious and do their homework. And so, like y'all are serious about getting people in and equipping, educating, and empowering them, uh, you know, to further their domain investing journey. That that's correct. It was a uh... It was a bit of a boot camp, and it was the first one. And he was trying to get a feel for whether it was something that was beneficial. And 
you know, it, and it, it really and truly was. And the the fact that the group or a portion of the group that was in the accelerator together has continued having a weekly meeting. That's awesome. Going forward is is great. I mean, we've had we've had um, notable names on there. We've had we've had Yogi come talk about outbounding. Jason Eisler talk about outbounding. Um, you know, we've had some other people on there that talk about their successes. Um, and so, you know, it's just every, everybody on there just wants to learn. And and so it's it's really just been amazing. And I'm looking forward to this next one. Indeed. Well, kind of wrapping up here, man, here, here's something for you. So in terms of, of revenue wise, now knowing what you did as a DJ, have you eclipsed that amount in annual revenue selling domains for 2020? Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, I think that, uh, I think 2019, I probably made more from domains than I did. <laughs> from, from as the Bernie, uh, as the late, uh, Bernie Mac would say, spinning records, um, <laughs> you, you yeah. have been spinning domain names into, uh, even more profitable, uh, success. And, and, and it doesn't mean that you're going to leave behind the, the, the turntables, but at least for the foreseeable future, you will, but it seems like 2020 likely has been that that turn of the corner for you to where you are, you know, fully stamped. Hey, you are full time domain investor. Yeah, I, I would say that's an accurate, accurate statement. Um, I, I certainly didn't consider myself full time in 2019, even though by the end of the year, it probably, you know, the 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 income was probably higher from domains than it was from uh, from DJing. Um, Why is that? What? It like just, why did why did you not consider yourself full time? Is that more of a mental thing, or is it? Yeah, I think I think it was a mental thing because you know I, I had this other thing that I did, and it was regular, and I had to leave the house to do it. Mm. It just felt like that was the uh, that was the. I mean, I, I, at that point, I was still calling myself. You know, well, yeah. What do you do? I'm a DJ, um, and now if somebody mm. says, "What do you do?" I say, "Well, I buy and sell domain names," and so it just that, like you said, it, at some point, and it was probably earlier or early this year um that even, even and i probably made the decision pre covid but covid probably just really hammered at home right because there was no way i was going to call myself a dj if i wasn't actually dj and the <laughs> couple the couple weddings that i did didn't really uh, didn't really count as far as you know doing two gigs in 6 months i mean by the end of march that was the longest period i had gone without djing in probably yeah 14 15 years wow so, so you know to go two weeks without dj is for was for me just not something that i had done in recent history mm. um and so i mean honestly if i if 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 the if covid went away if somebody waved a magic wand and covid went away tomorrow I would have no idea what to play for those 900 college kids tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Because music tends to shift pretty quickly. Yeah. I mean, it, it would be, it would be crazy. Um, and so, you know, the longer this goes on, the slimmer the chances are that I, that I make a return to the DJ booth. Now, will it ever be out of my blood? Will I probably not. I, I really had a good time <laughs> doing the, doing the Halloween online party. I'm looking forward to doing an online party, you know, like I said, hopefully New Year's Eve. Um, and then maybe it's just something I do a few times a year on uh, special occasions um, just because I enjoy it. But at this point, is it going to is it going to be um, something I do going forward for, uh, for you know, to as a as an income stream? I, I have a hard time seeing that at this point. That makes sense. So one question I got for you. So this is a question that I, I tend to to throw here and there everywhere throughout some of some of these podcasts. Just depends on who, who it is that I'm speaking with. Um, but obviously, knowing when you came into the industry in the last, you know, three to four years, think about it in terms of obviously, you know, many of the players within the industry. Mm -hmm. But for you. Who would be the one person that if you could sit down, have a conversation about domain investing to take your game to the next level, like who would that person be and why? Oh, I think that, that is a, that is a tough question. <laughs> um, 
It's supposed to be because me. It, yeah. Well. <laughs> 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 we, we talk though so it's like it's hard, for me to like it's hard for me to rewind it and be like all right if it was before alvin and i had had had, had several conversations and talked i chopped <laughs> it up a bunch um not only on here but you know offline I, but uh yeah so that is a tough one i mean the one person that i have not had a chance to like have a have a straight up con- uh, conversation with is drew rosner and and he's it's such it's hard for me to imagine there's su- there's such a big difference between the level that he operates with the names that he has and everything and where I am that I don't know that that conversation is going to give me that roadmap but he's such an interesting person um, and you know we share some of the same outlooks um, on certain things I think he was an early adopter on crypt- uh, cryptocurrency and I I've, I was as well and I I would I would love that conversation. But I mean, there's so many, there's so many people that in the industry that uh, that I get so much knowledge from, and I know I would get plenty of knowledge from if I were to have a chance to sit down and talk with them one on one. I mean, Shane Coulter and I have corresponded a lot, you know, but we haven't actually had a chance to sit down and talk much um, at any point, and and that's a conversation that I that I can't wait to have at some point in the future when people get back together. So yeah, there's there's a bunch of people out there. Well. There you have it, Drew. Shane, hit him up. Uh, you know, and, and that's a, that's a joy that I get, and one of the joys that I get rather from the industry is getting to tell people, share people's stories, as well as connecting people with one another. Um, and and I think that that's what makes the industry uh, go and grow, if you will. And so, I guess wrapping up here, man. Like, what would be your advice to someone starting their journey in domain investing? Like, where should they start, in your opinion? Definitely buy the, you know, or sign up for DN Academy. Yeah, the accelerator too, if you can, uh, if you can swing it. Just learn the craft and and, and buy fewer names. Mm. And I mean, that's the, that's the same advice everybody gives and nobody listens, but I, I, some people do though. And, and here's the thing though, if you buy 10 names and they are closeouts or hand regs or, or discount, you know, or drop catches or, you know, that you want outright, understand that the sell through rate on those 10 names is going to be very low. And so if you've held those names for six months and you haven't sold one, don't think that that's that you're a complete failure at that because it you know having ten names, if assuming a one or two percent sell through rate, that you might not see a sale for a number of years. Oh yeah. So and people are like, well, does that mean I need to buy more names? Well, don't go out and buy more of the exact kind of names. Learn, figure out what sale what sells, and if you if you are if you want to undertake outbound, which I'm not a big fan of personally, it doesn't <laughs> suit my personality, but I know there are plenty of people that are having much success with it. Yogi, Jason Eisler, um, a lot of other people then, then, and, and, and you think that that is something you would like, then yeah, buy 10 names and then work to sell them all and then replace them with, with, uh, with names that were the easiest name that you sold find something that is almost exactly like that and do it again. Um, and then, you know, other than that, it's just buy better names. I mean, I, I would rather see somebody spend $500 on a name than, than 50 hand regs. They're going to, they're going to sell that much sooner than they will and get more for it than they would the, an equal number of the 50. Yeah. That, and that, that is so critical. That, and we all have our stories of getting excited, going on, buying sprees that we had no business doing. And had we set the appropriate boundaries to say, you know, I'm going to invest uh, $200, whether it be hand rates, closeouts, or, you know, $500, whatever that amount is, set that amount aside. And until you're able to sell those and take the profits and reinvest, you probably shouldn't do any more or if you are going to make an investment it's like you said invest in yourself invest in educating invest in equipping yourself in terms of understanding the industry how the industry functions so you know and, and even at that one of the questions that uh, I didn't get to ask you but will ask you now is uh, like do you study the 
daily sales that are going on at the auction level or even at, you know, wholesale retail? Well, from a stand, I mean, I, I, and I use name bio all the time, but I, I don't necessarily go back every day and just look at what's sold everywhere across the board. Mm-hmm. Um, more or less, it's the, I watch the auctions I'm participating in and the types of names that I am going after. And I see what they're going for. And, 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 and I, you know, I look for, I look for chances to get my, uh, to get one that I think is as good as another one that might've gone a lot higher. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to, some of these, some of these names are going just so crazy right now on, <laughs> on, on, at the auctions. Um, you got some of the big players that are, that are putting in huge proxy bids on names and that you're going to have to just absolutely, you're going to have to outspend them if you want the name. So when it comes to that, you just need to really make sure that it's a name that you feel confident is going to sell um, and, and, and then just go from there. But for, yeah, when Josh was doing his daily podcast, I, that was a really good rundown for me. I, I should be doing that myself every day, not making the podcast, but going through the exercise, looking at the top sales from the previous days. Right. But, I, I, you know, to be to be honest, I, I don't do that. But I do watch it from his perspective of the things that I'm involved in. And and the ones that I'm, I'm involved in are the ones that I'm probably going to stick with, and, and those are the ones that I really do need to know about. Uh, that 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 makes perfect sense, and I think that that's the the one thing that every domain investor, you know, if it's if it's not struggling with the domains, if it's not struggling with pricing, it's really struggling with time management. And, and what do I do with the time that I have, especially if you're a part time? domain investor who has, you know, full-time job, maybe you have a family, maybe you have just other um, obligations and responsibilities. And so it's a matter of what do you do with your time and how do you make the most of it so that the return is uh, profitable. Uh, last but not least, I guess, is there anything else that you want to share with listeners? If somebody had questions about it, about this podcast, or just questions about the industry in general and wanted to get in contact with you, like how, how would they go about doing that? Oh, probably the easiest way is going to be find me on uh, LinkedIn. Um, it's Jason Shepard. Pretty easy. Uh, if you're if you have any contacts in the dam- domain industry, I'll probably float to the top if you search on that, or <laughs> or can contact me on Twitter. Um, you know, I'm you know I'm out there. DVDJ Kingpin for the time being. That may change in the future, um, but uh, it shouldn't be. Uh, it'll it'll always have Kingpin in it somewhere because I'm kind of attached to that from a DJ name perspective. Um, so that would be, that would be what I would say. And uh, to everybody, um, I hope that, uh, you know, as 2020 winds down, um, and, and what an odd year it's been, and uh, it feels like such a long year. I just hope that, uh, everybody has a, a safe and healthy and prosperous 2021 and let's kick this thing off. Right. And, uh, and go from there. And with that, we're out of time. So Jason, thank you again for joining us today and sharing your domain investing experience and journey. Oh, you're quite welcome, Alvin. Thank you for having me. And thank you listeners for tuning in to Kickstart Commerce, where we share search marketing and domain name strategies to help grow your business. Please subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, or Podbean. Last but not least, please visit kickstartcommerce.com to subscribe to the newsletter sharing tips and tricks about the disciplines of digital strategy. Thanks, and that's all for now.